Since the movies I'm feuding today are strongly geared towards the young adult crowd, I'm changing the way this show works. I'm changing the format, I'm switching it up, and I'm doing something wholly unique, extremely radical to YouTube, where I incorporate a lot of fast jump cuts, arm flailing, and an over-the-top persona. This has never been done before, so bear with me. Sarcasm ended. Let's feud. Look, there's a great looking cast here, but only one of them was part of the Fappening, so Jennifer Lawrence automatically wins because of that. Cheyenne Woodley, Cheyenne, Cheyenne, Chanticleer, Chant I don't give a shit, she's really hot too. Maze Runner is a Kristen Stewart ripoff without the heavy mouth breathing, so that's a plus for me. The boy toys in the Hunger Games are equally as impressive with Peta and Gale making all the single ladies put their hands up. All my single ladies, all my single ladies, all my single ladies, all my single ladies. Put your hands up, whoa, oh, oh. Maze Runner is a full on sausage fest with the guys coming in all shapes and sizes. These are penises. Thomas is the main character and he's the little engine that could. Then you have a Game of Thrones star playing Newt. Then we have Chunk in here from the Goonies. If it's a numbers game you're after, you can't go wrong with four. That's the character's name in the movie. Okay, you know what, look, I can't do this anymore. We're going back to our regular show. It's honestly giving me an ulcer. Catching Fire has a nice range of characters, from Woody Harrelson's Heimlich to Elizabeth Banks as Elfie Trinket. Kravitz and Tucci are both back as well, along with the fantastically cast villain, Donald Sutherland, as President Snow. Philip Seymour Hoffman's character, Game Master Heavensby, is introduced in this installment, along with Jenna Malone and Sam Clayton giving great performances as new tributes. It's going to be eerie seeing Hoffman back in these last two installments, but I think he's going to knock it out of the park, and hopefully it's a great send-off for the actor. I mentioned Lenny Kravitz a bit ago, but Divergent has a Kravitz of its own. His daughter Zoe plays a part in the film as Christina. There's a string of talent in Divergent that's very underutilized. Maggie Q, Ashley Judd, and Kate Winslet all have very limited roles, which I'm sure will be extended over the next few films. It's hard to determine which character I couldn't stand more between Eric from Divergent and Gally from The Maze Runner, but I think I'm leaning more towards actor Will Poulter's direction. The combination of stupid, illogical decisions and those eyebrows that just won't quit made me hate him way more than I had any right to. Blake Cooper as Chuck helped balance him out though with his lovable personality. Frypan and Newt were solid as well. Those are names we give people in stories. There will be spoilers in the upcoming segments, so if you haven't seen any of the films, do yourself a favor and keep watching, because I could use the ad revenue. None of these stories make a lick of sense, with Hunger Games somehow being the most rational of the lot. Setting up an elaborate game of slaughter to prove a point of dominance on an oppressed society is easier for me to stomach than an elaborate maze being constructed along with some sort of organic spider machines to test the validity of a cure during the onset of the world's downfall. Also, how do you have a giant maze and not let anybody get lost in the f***ing thing? I don't... How? What, what's the point? That's like having a buffet and all you can eat and not going back for seconds. It doesn't make sense. As for the story of Divergent, just take the plot of The Hunger Games and change the title of the movie. Okay, so it's not that easy, but it does have a large amount of similarities with the whole love triangle, oppressed society, breaking up of factions, and the one woman who will rise up and bring corrupt politics to its knees. Now, if you're in this simply for the love story, Maze Runner is out, Hunger Games is the smartest, but Divergent is the tweeniest. By that I mean you have a combination of Eli Golding, eye gazing, tattoo rubbing, and the traditional love triangle you would find in all of these movies. But if you're watching for the action, you're gonna wanna go Hunger Games. I'll talk about that further though in round three, which uh, we're gonna head to right now. Just follow me through the maze. It's just right around the corner. It, there's just like three corners in a hallway. It's the simplest maze on the planet. Catching Fire was a vast improvement over its predecessor. I Am Legend director Francis Lawrence ditches the awful shaky cam style in favor of a much more traditional approach. It's more in line with the middle batch of Potter flicks now, which is great. Gone are the terrible green screen effects as well. Everything looks much more polished. The action is intense too, with better training segments and a fantastic third act back in the games, back in the fray, back in the cut, back in time, back in black, back in the saddle, back in the high life again, back to life, back to reality. That was a lot of backs. Baby got back. Back to the future. Oh, now I'm backed into a corner. There's no going back now. 
Don't look back. Back me up here, somebody. Divergent is polished too, but the action is very PG. There's a couple of hand-to-hand -hand scenes that have a bit of intensity during Triss's training, but most of it's very fluffy shit, like a joyride through a city via zipline, or a jump off a train into a net that takes entirely too long to accomplish. And don't get me started on that capture the flag segment. I've had laser tag rounds that were more riveting. The Maze Runner should have easily won the action with its kick-ass setup, throwing a bunch of teenage guys into this batshit crazy scenario. I was expecting Lord of the Flies meets Battle Royale. None of that happened. No traps, no mind games, and barely any mystery within the maze outside of some numbers on the walls. Visually the movie's great to look at, in fact I'd go as far as to say it's the prettiest of the bunch. There's a really cool chase sequence, but outside of that the rest is very boring. The night raid could have and should have been much more exciting, along with that final battle on the bridge with more of the spider robots. Why? Why spider robots? <laughs> Hunger Games easily wins this round again for me with Rue's famous whistle incorporated into the theme song. Now for all you Ellie Goulding fans out there, you won't be disappointed with Divergent's soundtrack. She sprinkled through almost the entire film. I was paying attention to the music of Maze Runner because typically it goes underappreciated by me, but honestly, there's nothing worth talking about. I'm sure you music aficionados will prove me wrong, but I'm just setting the stage for you guys to fight anyways. I, music's not my forte, it's not my will forte. This could have been a much closer battle had I chosen Hunger Games Part 1 to feud with these two, but life's not fair, okay? You know my thoughts, now let me hear yours. Is Catching Fire the superior film, as I've stated, or does Maze Runner do it for you? I also want to mention the box office buzz logo you see briefly before all my videos. It's an awesome company comprised of dedicated movie lovers always looking for more talent. So if you have any interest in becoming a freelance writer, hit them up. I'm sure they'd be grateful. They didn't ask me to plug their site, I'm just friends with a couple of them. They gave me a chance early on when I just started. They saw the potential in movie feuds. Hopefully some of you guys do too, and you subscribe. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Imagine if I would have put Harry Potter in this. Would have just been a bloodbath.